Hey for lifers, this is Pig for Life coming at you with week nine of 2023. Uh, we got an old, another old figure, but a good one. I finally got this figure. This is uh, Toys Alliance Archcore Frostlight, but he also has like a billion other names. So uh, I don't know what ARCO2 is supposed to stand for, but uh, he has that in his name. And then he also has. 135th scale, I assume. Arch humorous type 03AY03F. So, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> he has a bunch of names, but we're going to just call him Frostlight. Uh, this is some kind of a unique uh, original property, um, I guess, from Toys Alliance and Stone Creative. Um, but it's a cool figure. The only reason I got this is because, well, two reasons. One is because T Man 978 uh, was raving about this being one of his uh, favorite figures of the year last year, even though it's not a Transformer. And because one of my nice viewers, Baker Jin, uh, he probably will show up in the um, live stream, or hopefully he does very often. He was kind enough to reach out to me and say, Hey, I heard you were interested in getting this Frostlight. Uh, I have one. He sold it to me for a very good price. So thank you, Baker Jin. So let's go ahead and get started with the review. Um, here's the box. Uh, it's a pretty nice box, pretty standard. Uh, really nice artwork that you have on the front here. I don't know if this is based off a comic or what, what, what have you, but it looks very nice. On the side here, you can kind of see him. Um, he's like a mech in the, in the sense. So he transforms, but they also have a lot of smaller figures that you can use to sit inside and drive and play him, uh, play with him and everything like that. Um, he can't fit in during the robot mode, but he can during his alt mode. So here he is, more of his robot mode. Uh, you can see at the bottom all the things he comes included with. Frostlight figure, frost hammer, frost shield, combat knife, and all that other information. Here's some links, QR codes to some of their sites. And then on the back, you can just see what he turns into. And again, some playability with the drivers, like the human armored up drivers that can sit inside here as well as some of the detail, die cast, and everything like that. So, um, again, very interesting box. Oh, very quickly, let me say hi to everyone. Let's see here. Wow, we got a lot of folks on. Our, well, not a lot, but a lot for me. Uh, Primax, Frankie Lawless, uh, Ridiculous Badger, Phalanx, Clinical, uh, Petrosum. Let's see, we got Mariano, Evil Ash. TM Review said he can't stay, but he's going to uh, say hi real quick. Oh, there's Baker Jen. Thank you so much for this figure. Uh, the Titan, True Star Screamer. Oh, True Star Screamer making a celebrity cameo. McLuit or G. Okay, so I think I got everyone. Uh, out of packaging. Oh, and I do want to let you guys know I got this nice new gimbal for you guys. Look at this. Look how smooth this is. Ooh, ooh, smooth. I really got it for the live stream um, hunts that I'm planning to continue doing instead of film ones, but. In any case, I uh, wanted to show that off very quickly. So he comes in a, a dual-layered container. Basically, I don't actually know why they felt the need to do it like this. They have like a whole section just for his manual and then his accessories here. I, I feel like normally you would just get this in like a, a plastic baggie. Um, but here, we'll just dump all that out. We're not even going to try to be careful with that. And then this layer itself has... Some plastic lined paint protector and then Frostlight himself in robot mode. And I think I did mention this before. He did, uh, he, he does uh, transform. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just very quickly, I went uh, ahead and had, because I didn't have a really good um, poll to put up. So I just decided to set the comments live chat on fire and ask. If you guys like pineapple on pizza or not, and I'm sure you guys will be talking about that for quite a while. Uh, what else do we got here? So yeah, he has his shield and has a couple of different playability features. This one is for locking onto his back. This is his handle. And then uh, if you want, there's a slotted um, tabbing mechanism that uh, will work on his arm. He has two combat knives, which also transform. Oh, sorry, I usually... Brighten this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, two combat knives. They do transform. You can see it's slotted here and they fold in like so. They look really nice. They look like something Rambo would, you know, shove into a guy's neck in one of his many, many movies. 
Um, First Blood. Uh, I think it was, wasn't until like the third movie that it was Rambo. So this is actually uh, a hammer, and it is well as well as being nicely detailed. It actually has a piston spring loaded function, and it kind of auto transforms. So if you press this here, it kind of juts out the hammer uh, handle, and then you can pull it out, and then you can see just how it works. It has a tabbing mechanism, kind of like our masterpiece that we're used to, and then it also has kind of a little tab thing down here. I think this is really just for the trailer. I don't even know um, if he has a trailer, but I do know he has a bunch of playability in combination with some other figures that I don't have and I don't plan on getting. So we're not going to be able to get into that. His instructions are pretty good. Out of packaging, he's basically in robot mode. Uh, there are probably only a couple things that you might need to do. The first one and the most important one is that he has these horns. And if you flip them up, you can even flip them up quite forward if you want kind of bullish. Or you can have them kind of angled upwards like this. Um, for, for the lore, I think it's supposed to be kind of like Viking themed. So you can see he's like Eric the Red here with this um, cool beard. Very Thorish, You know, more of a beard than I could ever hope and dream to grow. But you can do that. Um... What else was there? Uh, I don't think there's anything major. One of the things that I think I noticed, at least when I got it from Baker Gin, was um, I don't think this was slotted in, but this little tabbing mechanism here can slot into the back, and that secures the, the backpack and the upper body. Um, you actually untab it to access some of the articulation, but I think that's really it. So he comes pretty much in, in robot mode. These sections here might have been angled up or down, but again, that's up to you. Let's take a quick 360 of him. Let's see here. Scooch down a bit. And you can see just how nicely detailed it is. He looks really great. He has a lot of different colors going on. Oh, another thing that uh, I saw from T-Man's review. Um, these vent thingies here can actually rotate out. They don't actually lock into place. But they do act kind of like cat fillers. So maybe if your, your frost light does a lot of leg days, you want to have this out. Um, they're like thrusters or something like that. Or if not, you can just fold them in. Uh, it would be nice if they actually locked into place, though. So maybe, maybe not. But yeah, he's very clean. And again, it's based on a, a, an original um, media or story and characters. And there's no like actual alt mode to it. It's not a realistic alt mode. You'll see it's kind of a Mad Maxi kind of um, tractor trailer. But um, he does look super nice. He does have a decent amount of die cast in him. He's pretty hefty. So let me get the scale out. Oops, sorry about bumping the, bumping the camera. Uh, he is pretty hefty. You can see he has a lot of die cast here in the shoulders. Basically most of the joints here. This whole section on the, the pipes. His thighs have a lot of die cast in them. So yeah. Uh, let's see how many grams he is. He is 560 grams. Which is the equivalent to one pound 3.8 ounces so pretty hefty of a figure he is quite large too we'll, we'll do some comparisons uh in a little bit with some uh, other figures that i have obviously my the figures i'm going to trans uh compare them to are going to be transformers because that's what i mostly have but as you can see here nice paint details all around um and uh the the different colors that we have we have the grays the dark reds um, we have the whites. They just all work really well together. I like the color scheme a lot. I like the detail with the pipes up here. All right. Uh, let's get into articulation. This is one of the things that um, T-Man really loved about this figure and that I think anybody who gets this figure will really enjoy the most about it is just the amount of articulation he has. So first and foremost, his head's on a ball peg. Um, it's a little bit looser than I would like, but it actually holds any pose that you want pretty well. It's just looser than I was expecting. Uh, the horns we already showed, they can go up and down. Um, his whole neck is also on a peg that if you want to untab it, you can get more range if you'd like. Or you can just tab that in, either push down or you can push forward. But yeah, he gets a lot of range and bobble. The head sculpt itself is also very nice. We already showed it with his manly beard um the shoulders are very articulated so he has actual butterfly joints so you can see here that can go out almost 45 degrees toward the front with the butterfly joint um, and goes straight uh he has so 
the one area that is a little bit feels flimsy but hasn't been a problem is these uh, spring-loaded ratchets here. Uh, when you try to articulate, the the ones in the die cast joint are much stronger. So if you feel you can see it kind of separate here. Uh, so just be careful with that just in case. But his ratchets are nice and tight. They can go out maybe even one more than this, one more click than this. And then they can come inwards and down. You can rotate around here. Again, this I, I wish the spring was a little bit sturdier. Um, so it didn't move as much because I think when you hold the weapon as well, uh, it would hold a lot better if you didn't. It has this weird joint here. I don't, I don't know why this exists except maybe for some of the combined mode he has with some of the other, um, other figures, separate figures. I know he has like a kind of combined armored up mode, but I don't have that those figures, so I don't know what that's about. But I guess you can move this out of the way if you need to for getting the arm up. He has a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbow, so he has that upper elbow joint here. It's probably easier to show you this way. Upper elbow joint, which gets you 90 degrees. And then another joint down here, kind of mid-forearm, which gives you even more. So he gets quite a bit of range here. He has an interesting wrist. So his wrist is actually hinged on a pin at the base near the bottom. So he can go like this. I don't. Again, I don't know why he has this, but he does. Uh, he also has a transformation joint here, which is ratcheted. But you can use that if you need to. Uh, his whole hand is pegged in, so you got a swivel, as you can see here. The thumb is also weirdly designed. It's one of those that are like not anatomically correct. It just it just swivels around the the top, so you can go around like this. But it do, it can't come into the the palm itself. He does have one pin joint there. And the hands are probably the most disappointing just because of that thumb and also the fact that while he does have um, an individually articulated pointer finger with one, two joints, uh, the other three fingers are molded together at the base so they have one, two joints, but these three are have to move in tandem, which is kind of a bummer. There is that slot for his hammer. Uh, and the slot here... On the right hand seems, uh, on the left hand seems okay, still a little loose, uh, but on the other hand, super loose, on, at least on this copy. But the good thing is his hands are pretty well tolerant, so that once you get a grip on it, it's not going anywhere. But I would have liked it if the tab was uh, a little bit stronger there. All right, since we're at the hand, let's go ahead. Well, we'll just keep going, and we'll do the um, the axe later. I mean, the shield later. The waist has 360 at the waist, and as I mentioned before, if you untab this section here, which is totally fine if you do, he actually has access to an ab crunch, and it's pretty well frictioned. It is a friction joint, but it holds pretty well, even for such a sturdy, uh, heavy figure. We'll just lock that in for now. Again, we showed off the details and the angling you can do with this kind of front bumper with the little stabby stabbies. His hips on ratchets, you can hear them. He can go not quite 90 degrees. He's probably like 80 degrees both ways, maybe a little less going back. Um, they, I wish they were a little bit sturdier, but they hold okay. Going out to the side, also ratcheted. They hold okay. Thigh is the hidden thigh swivel. He has a, I think he technically has two knee joints, but the, for robot mode, you can really only use one, this one here. This one's a kind of a front knee joint, and that's kind of locked into place. But even with a single knee joint, you can see just how far it angles forward. Like it's like 135 degrees, so you only get like a 45 degree angle between, which is nice. And I think that's probably also why they uh, allow you to collapse this without um, uh, tabbing into place. Oh, thanks, Princeton Phalanx. I appreciate it. You have the best food channel. <laughs> I know, I'll have to do a food channel. I'll do food uh, tours and everything like that. Appreciate the two bucks. As always, Princeton, you're so generous with your with your donations. Um, if anybody who donates, I have been giving you a special role if you're in the Discord server. Uh, the problem is I can't match up everybody's Discord server name with their YouTube name. They're not always the same, but the ones that I could make 
obvious connections to, I went ahead and gave you guys a purple purple name so that everyone knows that those who are in my Discord server and have a purple name have been generous and have do donated to me in the past. Um, I'm, I'll pro try to, probably try to figure out something else to do uh, in the Discord um, with that, but again, we're still new on the Discord server, so uh, as I get smarter and as we get bigger, I'll figure out uh, other ways to recognize folks. All right, uh, sorry, we got sidetracked here. Uh, these die cast pieces, you can angle in any direction you want. They're on a swivel. The ankles here are nice. They can go out and inward. Uh, you can go uh, point all the way down and go a little bit up. His toe itself can also fold up, can't go down. And then, oh, oh, um, this is really for transformation, but if you need to, you can actually open up his ankle like this. I don't know why you would need to do that, but again, it is an option should you want to do it. Um, I thought there was another joint that I I remember to try to point out. Maybe maybe it was this one. That was kind of an odd one. Uh, but this guy is super articulated. You can get him very wide, and he's very stable with uh, the die cast in him and the, the pretty nicely tolerant ratchets. He can definitely do the Iron Man pose. I usually don't do this, but this guy is one that can like legitimately pull it off without looking awkward. Let me untab this. So I'm going to do this as a one-time courtesy, but you guys know. Um, oh, one other thing that Team Man pointed out is you can untransform the arm to get a little bit more of a longer arm. What you can see here, he can basically legitimately do the Iron Man pose without issue. Uh, let me... Like, he can do it without issue, and this is just very quickly doing it. You can get this down like that if you want, but you get the idea. He's super articulated. And with the with the butterfly joints, you can definitely make use of a lot of different poses that you normally wouldn't be able to do, coming across the face, double double holding the, the axe. If you wanted to do that, you could definitely do that. Um, I did want to show off the shield. Oh, let me tab this back in. So again, you can untab the arm at the shoulder. Thanks, T-Man, for pointing that out to get a little bit more posability. The uh, shield, let's go on the backpack first. This little tab here can lock in here. Uh, you got to make sure that it's facing this way so that um, it fits in this gap here. So it tabs in just fine. His stabby stabbies, uh, they don't have any tabs, but they can hold in his hand just fine with friction. Or he has some storage in his shins. Um, it seems like that was designed for alt mode. I don't know why alt mode, but you can just fold them up and then they tab in. Well, not tab in, but slot in and they hold in with friction. And you, keep, you can keep these in for the entire transformation as well. But I'll, I'll just do one and then show you how to add them in later. Uh, for the shield, you can also fold this up, bring out the handle if you need to, but even without the, the um, handle, if you just want to mount it, you can see there's a slotting system here. You just slide that on, and you can do some Captain America poses. But again, if you want, you can definitely um, get this handle. Here, yeah. You can actually do this without removing the hand, but then you it's easier to put it on the hand first and then slot it on. But since you can remove the hand, we'll just do it that way. And so you can see him hold the shield as well. So, very nice. I like it. Uh, this way. There we go. So yeah, he works really well with his accessories. Again, the only complaint I have in robot mode is... Um, the fact that uh, the fact that these shoulders springs just feel a little too weak here, but they they hold up fine. I haven't had any issues, but I've also been mindful. It just feels like you should be a lot more careful with it than you normally would. Uh, I guess it kind of feels almost like some of the ratchets in MP44. So let me bring out MP44. Because I don't really have another Archcore figure to compare him to, you can see 
how he scales there. Oops. Uh, he is definitely shorter by a little bit. Not not a whole lot, but definitely a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Oh, just because we did a review with her a little while ago, and we need to always be an equal opportunity robot displayer. Here he is with Bingo Toys Win, Win Girl. Win Girl. So there we go. Obviously, as I said in my review of her, you definitely need a, a stand to, to help pose her. She's probably going to fall over now. Uh, but yeah, those are some comparisons. If you have any other figure that you would like to see him next to, just let me know. Especially you, Princeton Failing, since you did uh, donate the $2. I always like to do something for the people who donated on the live stream. And I did show off this hammer piston all right so let's go ahead and get into transformation he's actually quite simple um to transform but he's also really interesting to transform so let's go ahead and get him transformed we're going to do the upper body first first thing we'll do is fold back the horns we're going to pop that joint off on the neck and then we're going to basically collapse that joint into his chin so it sits down like that then you need to pull up on his chest to untab these sections here. Then you can pull the chest forward. Oh, sorry, you have to un sorry, you have to untab the collar. So this whole collar section is tabbed into his shoulders. There we go. You can see these two tabs here. So you want to lift that up. That will allow you to pull the chest forward. Rotate it 180 to get it tucked in. And we can close that back up. We'll straighten out these pieces to make the bumper straight. And then we're basically just going to open all this up. So he opens up like so. You, so you want to get him all the way kind of upside down like this. We'll untab that um, lock that we use for articulation. And while we're here, since we're already messing with the waist, rotate at the waist 180. And you kind of kind of see how this is all forming. So this is going to be the front of the vehicle. This is the cab. This is the windshield or, you know, lack thereof. And then uh, this becomes the front of the vehicle. Those are the intakes, as it were. Oh, let me scooch this down a bit. And then uh, everything else kind of folds up underneath the cab. Uh, so we'll look look underneath. Uh, as we're Since we're already here, we're going to open up this door, untab it, rotate this section around, and this is going to form the, the door and the side of the vehicle. We'll just leave it like that for now. Coming underneath... There is a little seat for the driver. Uh, you want to pull that down, but it's not going to make much of a difference either way, whether you have it down or up, and you're only going to need it if you have one of those um, soldiers to fit in. So uh, if you don't want to do that, you can leave it closed. Make sure the butterfly joints are um, back in neutral position. Fold these pieces in. Get the arms down like this, and then untab as we showed before. And then you want to rotate this section all the way around so that the back of the arm tabs into this section here. Same thing on this side. Just rotate this all the way around, tabbed in there. And what we're going to do with this now is we're going to rotate this entire section all the way so that these two pieces are flat up against each other. Simultaneously, simultaneously we're going to rotate these ratchet joints out 90 degrees. So again, just be careful just because they feel a little fragile. But again, they haven't caused me any issues, but just be careful there. And as we fold this in, let's get the fist on that weird articulation joint tucked in like so. And there we go. That's it. Now we'll tab in the back of the arm here into this little slot, like so. Same thing on this side. The little red tab will go into this slot. And then you can close the doors kind of around it. Come on. There we go. Make sure the doors go underneath the, the cab itself. All right, so that's the front section. 
We're gonna deal with the back now. The back is all legs. So the first thing we'll do is uh, lift this section up on the kneecaps. We're gonna untab this section. Uh, here, it's easier to show this way. Untab and get, um, these are gonna rotate around, but first we're gonna untab the shin. So we wanna pull forward on the shin. It uses one of those kind of like, I don't even know what they're called. Kind of like, uh, I'll show you when you see it in a second. So once you untab those, you kind of also want to extend this little telescoping joint. It's so little that you may have missed it, but it is a telescoping joint. You basically want to strain this out like this. We'll rotate this die cast piece, the pipes, so that they're parallel to this flap. And then you will fold this close. You'll see two pegs that go there. So you'll know you got that orientation correct. And that knee joint, remember I told you there's two knee joints. Now that we've unlocked it, we can make use of that second knee joint. So we'll go like this. Uh, I'm gonna pull this up like so. Like that so that the thighs are facing straight down now. And then this part is gonna come up around the thighs and that forms the top of the roof. Oh yeah, here's the weird tabby thing, you know, these two friction joints and kind of like an I-beam piece kind of sits in here or like a rounded piece, that's how it works. All right, so now we're gonna bend at the lower leg straight up and then this will tab in here. We're going to open up the toes, uh, the, the foot in half, straighten this out, bend the toe down like so. And that's one half done. Oh, no, sorry. And then this piece that we untabbed, bring that around, rotate it so this little uh, pipe piece is on the side and you'll see it kind of butts up against there. So that's the one side. We'll go through the other side a bit faster. Again, once we have this untabbed, make sure that the thighs are straight down. Extend this telescoping piece and get it all the way up next to the thighs. This joint at the knee will bend forward. There's a little hooking tab there. We'll open up the foot in half, straighten that out, curl up the toe, and then get this piece around like that. And now it's just a matter of getting everything kind of tabbed together. So there is one tab that you need to fold out. Where is it? Uh, I always forget which side it's on. There's a fold out tab. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So right here, this tab folds out. And then this where the, the hammer comes in. The hammer actually folds up as we got it out of the packaging. And this goes in between the legs. Very similar to how a lot of other Optimus Primes, like movie primes, will store like the weapon uh, between the legs. So you can see this little groove here that will align with this. So it's easier to basically just align that groove and then there's a, uh, a peg here. Get those in and then you can just tab in both sides. Come on. Get that tab here. Get this groove slotted in. And then this peg here. All right. And then Again, let's just get everything straightened out. Uh, they do tell you to go give this a squeeze here, that telescoping joint. Mine was already collapsed by itself. And now we can get these the front and back section hooked together. So this section is going to come around. It's a hooking tab. Ugh. That is one of the frustrating things about this, this part is that this hooking tab, because there's a gap here, you want to make sure that you hold that in place when you do that hooking mechanism on both sides. Because if you don't, you'll ap apply pressure at the front and then start untapping the back section that you just tabbed together. So just make sure you do that. 
And now it's all clean up. So, well, that wasn't supposed to open up. These two halves come together. Oh, I forgot to flip this one around. But again, flip those pipes around, rotate this down, and those two pegs go in here. And then, let's see, these flaps are where the, the knives stored before. So I, I left, well, I left one in, but that one came out. But again, fold up the knife and just, just tuck it up in here. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, here we go. So you have the blade pointed down. You just tuck it up in here. Uh, everything else looks like it's all in place. The doors are in place. Remember this tab, this red tab? Oh, this this tab was came undone. So this one needs to go inside, like so. And with that, we should have every everything all set. So yeah, here is Frostlight in his alt mode, which is again kind of a Mad Maxi um, alt mode. You can see how mean it looks. And what once again using this slot, you can. Oh, I didn't show this, but. On the hammer, you can put the hammer, the this uh, shield on top of the hammer too. It, it's really not for weapon mode, but since it's used for alt mode, you can also do that weapon mode. We'll try to remember to show that off later. The tires are nice and rubbery. They look quite mean. He's very spiky. So you can see there's spikes on the wheels. So you can, well, you would theoretically be able to run somebody else's wheels uh, or rims down, but this actually blocks that. He has spikes on the front. His shoulder spikes are actually behind the bumper or the front end, uh, the hood, so you can't see that. But again, it looks really, really nice. Uh, very um, armored up vehicle. You can open the door like so. Close that up. What else do we got going on? Oh, so he also can open up this section and you can see the details with the seat. There's a peg in the back for the driver, so you can plug the driver in there. There's also a little kind of Jeep type of thing where you can fold down the front windshield or whatever. Not all the way, but you can fold it down, which is kind of a cool detail. Very post-apocalyptic with the details, the paint and stuff like that. Uh, is there anything else? Oh yeah, so I was, as I was mentioning, I think there's a trailer that goes with this. So if you fold this up, I think this is the trailer hitch. I obviously don't have that, but I did. Where is he? I did bring out the MP10 tra MP44 trailer just to so you can see how it might theoretically look. I'm sure he does. He's gonna have a much meaner looking trailer than this. It looks quite nice. Uh, is there anything else to talk about with this alt mode? Yeah, I don't know why they felt the need to have the storage here, but I guess it's nice to have storage regardless. Oh. And lastly, these two gray panels here, they can open up and you have one missile or bullet on either side there. I didn't even notice this at first, except that this is bare plastic, so it kind of uh, sticks out. I was like, man, what is that? So yeah, kind of cool looking. Give me a second, let me see if I missed any questions before we go back into robot mode. All right, let's see here. Uh, Q&A. Uh, what other Transformer company does he most closely resemble and feel in quality? Uh, this is from uh, McLouie Turgi. That's actually a good question. Uh, let's see. What does he feel most like? Honestly, he doesn't... Uh, maybe something like G-Creations? I feel like the plastic feels like G-Creations. Um, but he doesn't feel really like any other Transformers figures I can think of. I, I I don't know if you got yeah I think I think G Creations might be one of them or Generation Toy maybe, um, but only I'm just talking about plastic quality overall quality he feels really really nice. The only concerning area again is just the feel of the these ratchets here. Uh, is there anything else? Let me take a quick look at my my display and see if there's anything else. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's probably the most most like it. But again, it's it's really it's very different. It's very different than any other transformer. Feels very good. Feels very good. And I think this this guy was retailing for around one hundred fifty dollars uh, U.S. 
And I think it's a, a well worthwhile figure for $150. He's fun. The big reason that I didn't get him is uh, because I just didn't know about it, first of all. And I just didn't expect it to be quite this good. And I'm very happy with him. Uh, T-Man978 asked... Uh, are you going to keep this figure? I am going to keep this figure, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's kind of weird. I don't usually collect the one-offs. Uh, but this figure is really quite nice and just fun to play with and pose. Uh, I'll find a place for him somewhere. Like, you can you can think of him as some kind of post-apocalyptic transformer. Maybe in... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a movie-verse figure? I think he would work as a movie-verse figure. And I don't know if this is lion or bear. I mean... I guess there's a line here, because he has like a mane, but his face looks kind of bearish. He has the 03, so I guess of the many names and numbers, he is 03. Oh yeah, and I guess these are bear claw. Well, see, this looks like a bear claw, right? Yeah, because he has the five things. That looks like bear claw, not, not like a lion paw, so that's confusing to me. Not that it really matters. All right, I don't think I got any more. Oh, uh, let's see. We have some questions. He kind of reminds me of TSC uh, STC-01 Nuclear Blast. Oh, you know what? Uh, I don't think the plastic quality feels this, uh, as similar to that, but he is very fun. Oh, pa he, uh, Baker Jin also says, if you're interested in the other one-off Transformers, the Metal Slug Transformer is nice too. I've heard that as well. Yeah, Mario says, uh, interesting but pass. Oh, he does kind of have a Junkion feeling. Yeah, you could definitely pass him off maybe as Junkion. Oh, that was the other figure. Remember the, uh, what was it? What was that Kickstarter, I think, with the motorcycle ones? Uh, Inglorious Bastards? If you guys have Inglorious Bastards or whatever, that, that motorcycle Junkion, whatever it was, I feel like this would, I, I feel like this would be a really good fit in for that. I don't even think they're doing anything else. Hey, Jonathan Walker. Oh, he says bedtime. See you all. Pig for food. Hey, Anthony Brown. Still blocked for you. Oh, the Q&A section? It's okay. Uh Oh, Springer comparison? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you, Anthony, because you've donated in the past. <laughs> True Star Singer said, I trust Arch Core's knees more than MB44 for sure. All right, cool. I think I got. I I went back a little bit. I didn't want to go all all all, all the way back. Unrustables, not inglorious. Yeah, unrustables. That's what I was. I was talking about. Yeah, I think I think they this would fit in really well with with that crew if you like that. In terms of looks, I don't. I've never messed with that group uh, that um, set of figures, so I don't know if it actually feels the same. But this one feels really solid, and I am going to keep him, especially because uh, Baker Jen gave me a really good price on him. All right, so let's get him transformed back. Let's take off the shield here. Um, let's start off with the legs. I think the legs are just makes a lot more sense. But before we do that, let's start untabbing some of the sections to separate the front and the back. So I'll untab here. Untab here. And then we're just going to split the back, essentially. We'll split the leg. Get the hammer out. Press on the piston get that kicked out you can always just pull it out as well but it's just kind of fun to do that put this off to the side and bring the the legs down straighten out the toes bring the heels down no why isn't why isn't this pointing this should rotate around okay yeah it, it does it was fighting for me for a second so tab that in From here, remember to telescope out this piece just a little bit. Fold this panel; it pegs in right there, and we can you can rotate it when it wherever you want later. And for this section here, you want to flip this up again. That was tabbed in. Oh, sorry. You want to actually you actually want to get this. Oh, oh! These these stupid things came off. Flip this up. You want to get this untabbed, and that way you can make use of the double-jointed knees. So you want to get them thigh, 
bent 90 degrees this way and then 90 degrees down like that. Then you can bring this around. You have that weird tube piece that goes in here. That uh, that reuse of that um, a mechanism like that that's very common with uh, I don't know if you guys know the Tobot figures. It's like a Korean line. I think I've done like maybe one review of a Tobot figure, but um, it's it's very similar. They use a lot of that mechanism on their figures. And then lastly, uh, get this red panel out and around to the side here. That tab goes in there, like so. And so we're done with one leg. Same thing on the other side here. I always forget to telescope this, so let's just telescope this. Unlock this tab here. And then make use of both of those joints. This section will flip around. Remember to close this up. I always forget to close this up. Uh, I'm going to fold this upwards. And you need, you need to make sure to fold that little tab in. Um, otherwise, the, the uh, legs won't sit correctly. So fold this around. I think rotate it like this. Tab in the shin. Where is it? There we go. We'll tab in here, fold the kneecap down, and then with the foot, remember to rotate it, fold it the two halves together, and that leg is also done now. Coming to the upper body, let's make sure to rotate it the waist 180, and then we're going to start taking care of the arms. Again, all we need to do is straighten these out, and start bringing out untabbing this section, untabbing this section, and then just bring the arms out to the side. Like so. Flip these pieces out. You'll need them to be kind of space fillers later. Come on. What's going on? Let me get a spudger. There we go. Like so. While we're here, these door panels will come up around 180 degrees and then tab in. These are just going his backpack later. There we go. Fold the seat up if that was down. And once we start bringing all this down, remember we got to open up the chest, flip the head out 180 degrees. And you just have to be mindful of the position of these, these slots on these uh, rotating shoulder joints. Remember, because these can rotate in any um, angle. You just had to have them aligned so that these two tabs, when they come back here, tab in correctly like that. And then you can tab in the chest with those three tabs here, here, and the center. That will tab in there. We can lock in the backpack here. Fold down the space filler on the sides. And then these two panels will just fold on the back. Let's just rotate this up just a bit. The shoulders, remember there's two tabs here. We want to rotate around and tab that in. And then get these facing the correct orientation so that the spikes are facing forward. Come on. There we go. And then angle this and then bring the horns out. And with that, you have Frostlight back in his robot mode. Give me a second, and uh, for Anthony Brown Jr., I need to make sure that I uh, do that comparison for him real quick. Uh, something seems weird here. Seems like this should be straighter than that. All right, I think that's. I think it's fine. All right, so he wanted to see it with Fans Toy Springer. Uh, oh man, he is at the back. Oh, I don't. I, I have MMC Springer, so not Fans Toy. So let me do that. Oh, and before, as I showed, uh, as I mentioned, you can slot this on the top of the hammer if you want. So you have like a satellite dish hammer if you want. Uh, that's not really probably as intended, but let's just leave him here real quick, and I'm gonna go get Springer. Give me a second. Ugh.
probably shouldn't have promised this because he's on the back of my shelf because he's so big. So he's very annoying to bring out. All right, here he is for that junkie on kind of comparison. Oh, since I also brought out. Since we're talking about Junkions, I'll go ahead and bring him out. And you can see my, uh, my Rekgar, his mustache. Yeah, yeah, he didn't even donate the $2 this time. But I gotta do it for him. He's, don he's donated before, so. There's a lot of stuff I'll do for 2 bucks. But my, my KFC Junkion, his mustache broke off just randomly. So he only has one... One side of his Fu Manchu now. Very disappointing. I couldn't even like get it glued back on. But yeah. These look these guys, these guys look pretty good together. But yeah, I think the unrustables, uh, if I had them, I think that would be a really good comparison. Alright. I don't think we have any more of QA. Let me go check one last time. Yeah, we're good with that. And then I'm going to end the poll. So, again, asking folks, pineapple and pizza, yay or nay? Closing the poll here. And it actually adds up to 100% for once. It never ends with 100%. We had 56% saying that uh, yes. Oh, no, never mind. Now that I closed it, it says 55% say that yes, pineapple and pizza, I'm with you guys. No need to be a pizza snob. Whatever you like, you like. And then 44% uh, said no. And then the 1% goes to YouTube since they always skim off the top. But yeah, that's really it for the review. This guy, I'm really glad to have gotten him. Uh, he is uh, definitely one of the more articulated figures. So if you're definitely a poser and not just like me who just puts their figures standing with one weapon on their shelf... Um, this guy is definitely for you. He can do a lot of cool poses with the butterfly joints, as you saw. Even though I don't do a lot of posing, he just has a lot of nice, small, detailed articulation that you normally don't get. And he feels very, very solid, very hefty. Um, I don't have any concerns aside from that shoulder joint. And the shoulder joint itself, as long as you're like not just like trying to ratchet it up at the end, but going towards the actual joint itself, you shouldn't have any issues with it. But yeah, overall, I really like it. Uh, I'm going to wait and see what other people think of the other figures. So I do know that... Oh, sorry, I didn't peg in his neck. But you can peg in his neck there. I mentioned that before. Um, but I want to see what the other folks think. Uh, I know that there are a couple of wolves, I think, that turn into armor. Um, but if there's another like standalone figure that he can go up... up against i think i'll probably get one of one of those just so he has a buddy to stand next to but he looks great i think it's very cool um the quality of the overall figure i think definitely justifies the 150 dollars ish price tag uh the downside is that um he's kind of hard to find now because he's been um out of production for a while i don't know if they'll do a rerun but if you can get a second hand for around you know 150 bucks or less i think he's definitely well worth it He's a very cool figure, very fun. Uh, he's been my death spot for the last week or so, and he probably will be for quite a while. I think he's one of those figures that I'll probably use for some comparisons just because he looks so cool. Uh, the standalone for the other faction is disappointing, just a remold of this one. Okay, well, if there's another like good, a unique mold, I'll, I'll, I'll probably try to pick, pick that up. But Baker Jin said the one that he, they do have right now is just a remold. So yeah. Um, oh, the the other figure that he might go really well with. I don't know if you guys um, collect Astro, the Astrobots. That's also another line that I've been neglecting. I do have one Astrobot, like the original one. I got him for free because it was a defect that uh, the batteries didn't work, the lights didn't work. But um, I know that Astrobots are finally debuting, or they have the first couple of issues out, and that's also an original property. Um, I think that's probably another figure set of figures that this could kind of go really well with.
But yeah, that's really it for the review. Uh, sorry it took so long. I appreciate the dozen or so of you who came and watched, even though it's not a normal Transformer review. But I do recommend them. Uh, if you guys do uh, have any interest in this after reviewing it, uh, you'll probably have to get it second hand, unfortunately, uh, or wait for a reissue. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, pineapple on pizza debate. I'm guessing that's, that's still going on now. Uh, Clinical said, are the uh, wheels rubber? Yes, they are. I did mention that before in the alt mode. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mariano. But, yeah. So, uh, that is, again, continuing my streak, week 9. I'll be doing some more reviews. So, I did mention that I did finally get my YOLO Park um, Optimus Prime. The one that was, like, 23 three hundred dollars that I, I i honestly probably regret regret getting i haven't opened them yet but i'll probably do an unboxing and then an actual review of that at some point but it's so massive it's like two feet tall i'll have to find out how i'm gonna do it and where i'm gonna do it and i'll probably have to be uh, in front of the camera and you'll have to see my ugly mug instead of just my ugly hands so i gotta figure out how i'm gonna do that um, but that will be a figure i definitely want to do since i spent a whole bunch of money on that uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it just because, I, man, just the boxes themselves are so big. I have no idea how I'm going to store that figure or where I'm going to display that figure. So I'll figure that out. But I do want to show that off to you guys because I know most people are not going to drop $2,000 plus on um, on uh, a transforming figure. So I'll I'll show that off to you guys. And let you guys know what I think of it. Um, I was really excited about it. It's the Bumblebee Optimus Prime that's like two feet tall and has a bunch of working gears and mechanisms and stuff like that. So I definitely will have that at some point in the next week or two. Um, we'll be back tomorrow for a mainline Monday. What am I going to do tomorrow for the mainline Monday? Uh, where was that figure? What was I going to do? I'm, trying, I'm forgetting which mainline figure I'm doing tomorrow. But I'm doing a mainline figure tomorrow. Uh, and then maybe another review this week. So this week will probably be pre pretty busy with maybe three or so reviews or videos. And I'll, oh, I'll also be doing um, pu push, pushing out some more live sh um, pre-recorded hunts that I did uh, last week. So keep an eye out. Again, I'm trying to do more videos and more variety of content uh, just to keep you guys entertained since I don't do a lot of reviews. Um, hopefully we'll get some new stuff in. Like, I haven't gotten my Jetfire yet. Oh, Planet X Iron Eyed. Yeah, he's... Oh, yeah, I was going to show him off in comparison to the, um, alt mode. But, yeah, this, this figure is trash. Oh, I might also do a review of... Where is he? Baker Jean also sold me, uh, this guy here. The Planet X Shockwave. And he's actually pretty good. So maybe I'll do a review of him this week as well. But yeah, that's all to say that there'll be more videos coming out this week, probably like three videos in total this week. So keep an eye out for that. And again, I appreciate all your time, all your support. With that being said, we'll let you go and I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Have a good one all.